For this week's TLDR, we're talking about a very serious issue that affects so many foreigners that come here to Korea. It's a very sensitive topic, one that hurts the hearts of many of us here. I would say that it affects us on like a daily basis. Today, we're going to talk about the state of Korean bakeries. It's okay. Everyone, put your hand in the healing circle together. We can do this we together. We can do this. If you're from Europe, mm. I think this might be hitting you the hardest, actually. Ooh. Maybe if you are a foreigner from other Asian countries, maybe it does not hit you as hard as it hits us. But I miss bread daily. <sighs> I think about bread daily. How many times have you had a hankering for a sandwich and went down to the local bakery to buy one just to realize that the bread is made out of the sugary gluey cake dough and you get really upset. Shh, I know it's happened to us all. It's okay. Shh, we're healing together. How many of you have traveled to a bakery in a far distant area just to spend eight dollars on a quarter loaf of homemade bread but it was worth it. And you'll do it again. You would do, you it, will again. do it again. Yes, bread. Something I really, really took for granted when living in Canada. I never expected to miss a particular style of bread so much because I think the bread that we're used to growing up with, we've taken it for granted yeah. that is the same all over the world. You think that it's the gold standard while in other parts of the world, bread is very different. Yeah, in e Korea especially. Even the basic bread in Canada, like the Wonder Bread that might be like 99 cents, you'd yeah. be like, oh, I wouldn't eat that kind of a crappy bread. Now I will. You can send it to me. I will eat that bread. I mm. miss European bakeries. I miss six bread rolls for $3. I miss the smell of butter in bakeries. <sighs> so this isn't to say that bakeries don't exist in Korea. Very many of them do. It's just that they're more catered for a Korean palate than what we're used to in bakeries. Sometimes you hear foreigners say things like, Korea doesn't know how to make bread, or they don't know what they're doing, they can't make pastries. I don't agree with that. They I, just don't make your style. Your style, exactly. In fact, there are a lot of Korean baked goods that I think are absolutely fantastic, but they're just made differently than I'm used to. Like, for example, there's a lot of rice flour yes. happening in Korea. So a lot of the loaves of bread that you'll get here are made out of rice flour. So they'll be a lot stickier and a lot sweeter and mm. not really what you would want to use for a sandwich. Or the stuffings might be more natural. Like, for example, there'll be red bean or like chestnuts, mm. sweet potatoes, pumpkins, a lot of sesame seeds, that yeah. kind of stuff. So it's good, but it's not what I'm used to when I want, let's say, an eclair or mm. something that could be really bad for the growth of my butt. And the plain loaves of bread themselves, those are probably the biggest difference that we see. They might have a couple different types of bread and every one you buy, even if it says like 12 grains, it's like 12, 12 grains of sugar 12 per grains bite. Of sugar. It's more like a cake dough than it is like a vehicle for a savory sandwich. Yes. We sometimes feel pretty duped because we'll walk into a bakery and you'll see on the wall that they have like sourdoughs and oh rice and baguettes and whatnot. Are you going to the cash? Like, I want one of those. And they're like, oh no, those are just the 3D display models that we have. We don't actually sell that kind of bread. Here, why don't you have this sweet donut instead? Oh, it's so good. Why do you advertise yourself like something that you're not? Don't do that to me. It's, it's, mean. it's rude. It's mean. It's, it's mean. horrible. It's hey, why don't you come into my hockey shop where you can buy hockey goods and here's a basketball. Now, I would say bakeries have become really popular in Korea now, especially there are a lot of chains like uh, Paris Baguette or, um, as Simon says, Tao's Le Jour. Tao's Le Jour. It's too Le Jour. Yeah, and like Paris Croissant. There You'll are a lot of places. You'll see lots of things that say French words and then they try to make you feel like it's a French bakery when yes. it's really not French at all. In fact, even when we went on the Ichi Kimchi road trip and mm -hmm. we drove out to like this tiny little town to try to find groceries, there was nothing above two stories, but there was a Paris Baguette yeah. in this tiny little town. And I was like, okay, they're everywhere now. In 2011, there were supposedly over 3,000 Paris baguettes and 1,400 tout le jour. Just those two brands alone equate to roughly one bakery for every 11,000 people in Korea. And I'm not sure if this means a lot to you, but think about it this way. Do you feel as if there are a lot of Starbucks everywhere? Well, in 2014, there were just over 12,000 Starbucks in the US or roughly one Starbucks for every 27,000 people, which means that in Korea, there are twice as many bakeries as there are Starbucks is in the US. Really? This is math. Yeah, so if you feel like, oh my God, this the Starbucks is, is there. This is math. So there are so many bakers everywhere. There's this is why huge. I didn't follow you. You were like, numbers, numbers, numbers. And then you said, this is math. Yeah. And I was like in my head thinking of um, sourdough bread. I'm just like, trying to show you how big bakeries are in Korea as opposed to Starbucks is elsewhere. Now, the only thing I'm going to say that's kind of sad about this is that um, the Paris baguettes, if you go into some of them, you might see behind the glass, it looks like people are baking things freshly. In fact, that is not true. They're all made in a factory and then they're sent over to the shop and then the shop either defrosts them yeah. but nobody up. actually makes a dough or needs a dough it's just all this one factory that yeah it's
it's kind of like if out. you go to like a McDonald's, mm -hmm. you order it and somebody will make your burger on a grill, but they're mm -hmm. not actually making the meat patty. Yeah. Or like they're kind of assembling it according to what's happening. When I've gone to Paris Spaghetti or Toulouse, I've never actually had anything that I thought was exceptional. I've mm -hmm. never been like, wow, this is amazing or really mm -hmm. good. There's not really like um like an artisan feeling to anything there. Which is why we find it really funny whenever you hear about a K-pop idol that's opening up a bakery. Like for example, Eunhyuk from Super Junior opened up a oh, yeah. Toulouse jour for his mom or something along those lines. And we're all like, uh, and we're like, we know that this is just like a franchise that he put his name to. His mom is in back there like covered in flour and kneading <laughs> dough and like putting love into something. It's it's just they bought a name. It's kind of like if you were to buy your own Starbucks. It's We've gotten a lot of comments and emails from people being like, can you go to Unhyuk's bakery? It's called Toulouse jour. And I'm like, been there a million Once times. Once you've been to one of them, you've been to all of yeah, them. I've even seen some blog posts dedicated to people who travel to Korea and went there especially because the actual place has pictures up of him yeah. too. So they're doing a really smart job of being uh. like, oh, this is his mom's yeah. bakery, but it is not. And they talked about the menu items, yeah. like the one that talked about a strawberry smoothie because the strawberry is his favorite. I'm like, it's at everyone. It's everyone. It's, everyone. it's similar also with the Tusum Cafe. So it's like Teddy, like up the street, he has his own Tusum Cafe. It's the exact same as she wants Tusum Cafe. The same Tusum, just with different celebrities yeah. on it. There's nothing real sincere about it. Just plaster your name on it. You're just a model for it. So the reason why we're talking about these franchise bakeries is because it's actually creating a problem for the small businesses in Korea. So the Korean baking school, opened in 1972 and it's a kind of like vocational school for mm. people to learn to be chefs or like master bakers or mm. you know that kind of thing where master you're master baker master bakers <laughs> you said it not me master bakers i'll stay in mm -hmm. i'm a professional master baker <laughs> what's your profession i master bake all day oh my god this is amazing how oh, I never thought of this before. It's like in Downton Abbey, the guy's name is Master Bates. Oh yeah, oh, I forgot about him. Oh my Bates God. Bates is Master Bates. I'm an adult, I can focus. The point is, this baking school is in danger of closing down now because when it comes to the franchises taking over all the little tiny shops, people that run it don't actually have to be bakers. They just right. have to be kind of like figureheads that put things people into People that can the... push the right button. So we have a pretty sad stat to back this up. Supposing in the year 2000, there were 17,000 self-owned bakeries. In 2005, it dropped down to 15,000. And in 2011, that number dropped down to 5,000. So you can see that the major franchises are really pushing out the smaller shop and there's not a lot of diversity in the baking anymore. 5,000, that's it. Yeah. 17,000 to 5,000. 5, all within the span of what, 11 years. Yeah. Now that doesn't mean that small bakeries don't exist anymore. There are mm -hmm. a handful of small ones that we love that we go to in order to get our bread hankering. If you want to know what those are, if you're living in Korea, make sure you click on the link here and we'll tell you our secrets. Hopefully they'll still be there by the time you guys... I know, there, you there's know? a good chance it might be overrun. Yeah. Go there, support them. There's at can. least two or three of them in Hongdae themselves. So our question for you guys this week is what is bakery culture like in your home country. Do you feel that loss of bread when you go to different countries or do you find that Korean bakeries have similar things that you're used to? Mm -hmm. If you are living in Korea, tell us your stories of sadness. So I remember when we were in Sweden, we were speaking with people that actually didn't like North American style bread because they said it was too loose and fluffy. Yes. So everyone has their own interpretation of what yeah. a proper bread is like. Yeah, when we were in Sweden and Norway, they had that really dense, dense. blue brat. Snooker brat, brat snooker. It definitely Something had a lot of K's snookers in it. it, and it was yeah. like, like really, I could like, ugh, like murder someone and then eat the evidence. For last week's TLDR, we did a big old talk on my EDS, and I realized in horror right now that I was wearing the same shirt. <laughs> What you don't know is that Martina hasn't actually changed for the past week, nor has she bathed. That's not true. It's been exactly a week. So fresh and so clean. I changed my outfit. You wear the shirt in like every video. You don't realize it. You like. Did I wear this last week? Like one bum on camera here. Bro, Raise you your hand if you're wearing something different. No, you did not wear the same shirt last week. I know because look, my hair is different. Proof that this was a different day and time. My makeup is different. The whole point is that we want to thank you for all of the awesome comments yes. that you left in the comment section, all of your support, and Got also some great for emails too. sharing your stories about the invisible illnesses that you yeah. deal with. I think when you read the comment section, you realize that people suffer from a lot more things than you realize. Mm -hmm. So many different things people are going through. So I'm really happy that we can all kind of like stick together. And I wanted to just scream at the comment section the whole time, like we can do it, fighting. On our website, though, we got a really interesting comment from Beat This Day who wound up saying that why are there no braces that are designed to look funky like mm -hmm. rockabilly with bows or whatnot why is it that majority of the braces are like drab sad colors I don't know and I like how they're like here's a blue brace it'll blend into your 
What? You're what? What is this going to blend into? There is a definitely needed market for fancy pants orthopedics, and yeah. we should definitely start making those. Steampunk, man. But the yeah. thing is, you can't have anything 3D because if you fall or hurt yourself, it'll punch into you. So yeah. it's got to be like fake printed steampunk. I want like a robot leg. Like it's not a robot leg, but it looks like a robot leg. Let's make it happen. <sighs>